Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. We're working on borders today, so if you want to see how to miter corners for your quilt border like this, please stay tuned. Normally when I make a quilt, I just use a plain border where I just join uh, one strip at a time around each side of the fabric. So here is an example of that. This is a quilt that I made several, several years ago. And you can see that it was, I did the side border first. And then there's a seam here where the, I joined the top border after that. And this is a nice border. It really doesn't, um, it doesn't add or take away from the quilt. It's a nice border. And since I was just using uh, one fabric, I think it's a great border to do. And it, since it's the first one I learned, of course, I think it's a good option. However, what we're gonna do today is we're going to create a mitered border. And what a mitered border does is it comes out at an angle. So the, it frames the, uh, the quilt and we use a 45 degree angle to, to set that border. What is interesting about this one is that not only am I doing the miter, but I'm adding a stripe here. So we're using two fabrics to create this border. So I'll show you one step at a time how we create the strips and then um, how we put that together to create our border. And then we'll do the miter. So the first thing that I've done is I have two fabrics that I've used. I have a red fabric here that I've cut into one and a half inch strips. And this is gonna be the inner border. And then the turquoise fabric, which is here, I've actually cut it into three and a half inch strips. And this will be the outer border. And when these two borders, uh, when I put them together, they will come together on a, um, at a 45 degree angle. Now, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna make this strip set using the red and the turquoise. But before I do that, I have to determine how long the strips need to be for each side of the quilt. So let me show you how I did that. This is my log cabin quilt. I made a video about it a long time ago. And so what we'll need to do is, I'll fold it out like this. And here's how you figure out how much you need. For the short side, um, you wanna measure from side to side, and then you add the width of the border to each side. So this quilt, uh, it started out at 62 inches for the short side, and so I need to add um, eight inches because I, the border is about four and a half inches uh, wide. Actually, I added nine inches plus another two inches on each side to um, to take account for the turning. So I have the measurement of the center, which is the 62 plus eight, four or nine, four and a half on each side for the width of the side border, and then another two inches just to allow for turning and to make sure that we have enough fabric. I did the same thing on the other side, um, only this time I did 88 inches, and because that took into account everything, a 75 inch um, strip, nine inch border, and um, two additional inches. But when I did the 88, it was way too long. Well, it was a little bit too long, um, but it didn't matter when I did this, this corner. All right, so after you figured out how much you need, then you need to determine how many strips you'll need for each side. For the short side, I need two strips. And then for the long side, I think I need about two and a half strips for each side, but I'm gonna show you how I join those two to get, to get those strips. So the next thing we're gonna do is go to the sewing machine because I wanna show you how we join these strips together. So we're here at the sewing machine and I wanna show you another use for the Sew Straight Ruler. I showed you um, a way to use it to create your quarter inch seams before, um, but this time I wanna show you how we can use it to do these uh, diagonal lines, these 45 degree lines. So 
what this ruler has is it has a series of uh, diagonal lines in addition to a quarter inch seam line and a stitching line. So what I'm gonna do is just, um, these are the two red strips, and all I need to do is find a line to, um, to line this fabric up with. And so I've chosen this diagonal line, and you just wanna make sure that you have enough uh, space for the stitching line to go where you where it's going to be uh, sewn through the red fabric. And then I'm going to take another piece. I like to have my first piece pointing down. So my next piece, I'm going to have it pointing up. And I'm just going to choose a another line that goes the opposite way. So when we um, put these together, it creates the um, you put them together at that 90 degree angle and then we can just line up the little where they meet the area where they meet is lined up on that stitching line so it's going to give us a nice straight line and we don't have to mark or anything like that and as it goes through it gives us a nice um, even stitch i'm going to do that same thing with the turquoise fabric it's a little bit different because this fabric is wider, but the same principle. So starting with just choosing one line that's uh, pointing down to the right, and then putting another one, putting my other piece of fabric on a different line. I'm just gonna reline this up and make sure that it's good. And then I'm sliding it down just so that there's turquoise on the stitching line. Okay. And then this other one here. And so you can see that the point where they meet is on the stitch line. And then once I start sewing, all I have to do is look at this bottom point and keep it lined up. Typically we would be, um, during this stage, we would be marking or um, pinning and all that, but with this Sew Straight ruler, we don't have to do that. Okay? And so now, all I need to do is take these off. And then when I pull them, you can see that it's a nice straight, um, a straight seam. So I'm going to take these, cut these um, edges off to a quarter inch, I mean quarter inch seam, and then um, we'll get ready to sew them together. Two strips here. These, are, This is two with some fabric that's sewn together using that um, the diagonal seam here, and I've pressed those seams open. At this point, I'm going to sew the seams right sides together with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'll come back on camera to show you our next step. I have my strip sets sewn together. This is the long side here. And then I have the short side right here. And what I've done to help with the nesting is I press the short side toward the red fabric. You can see that. And then I press the long side to toward the turquoise fabric. So when they, the corners come together, they should nest nicely. The other thing that I did was I marked with pins. First, I marked the center of each strip. So you can see for each strip, I marked the center here. And then I've marked um, six and a half inches in. That covers the distance of the strip and the extra fabric that we have for the turning and I marked that on either end. So for each one, marking six and a half inches on each end and then folding uh, that center point. I've done that on both of these strips and I've actually done it on the quilt top as well. So for each side, here is one side that I've previously stitched and so um, I'm going to go back and put a pin here in the quarter inch and I've already marked the center 
and I've already marked on this side with a quarter inch. I actually have a dot here as well to help with when I'm placing the fabric. But you wanna mark because when you start stitching, you'll start from the quarter inch mark and then go down to that the other end. And when you get to the other end, it's the same thing, so into the quarter inch. So I'm gonna take one side. This is the short side. I'm actually gonna do I think this is the long side. I think this is the long side. But whichever, I'm going to do uh, this side and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to put it together. I've sewn this side on. This is the side that was previously done. And then I did this side. And this was actually a long side. But I want you to, to notice how there's plenty of fabric here for. Um, for joining this is about how much you need so you see the width and then two inches extra you need plenty of fabric there so that um so that after you join them together there's plenty of room to finish out the um the seam and for the seam allowance our next step is actually going to be to fold these right sides together and you want to just um Make sure it's nicely, the borders are, are on top of each other nicely. And I'm just adjusting here. And from this point, from here down, it should be a 45 degree angle. We'll check it, we don't really have to check it because these ends are, when they're on top of each other, it should be fine. And then our next step is going to be to take a ruler and we're going to put the 45 inch or 45 degree line on this seam line. I'm actually putting it on this seam line. And then I'm going to draw a line that goes out here. I'm placing the 45 degree line on the ruler. And I'm going all the way up to that uh, stitch point where the stitches meet. Okay, and I'm actually, actually before I do that, I'm going to fold this down because I want to do, um, I'm going to do the, from kind of inside the seam because when I stitch, I'm going to stitch all the way from this stitch point all the way out. Okay, so putting the, placing the ruler, the 45 degree line on this ruler right on that stitching line and then sliding it all the way down make sure we got a proper angle and the way that I'm checking it I'm just placing uh, this line on the stitch line and then I'm going to draw you I'm using my friction pin but it doesn't matter because it won't be seen the friction pin will disappear when I heat it but Either way, nobody will actually see the line. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see exactly what we're doing. I try to move around a little bit so that it will be easier to see, but this is what I've done. Here's the stitch line. And I'm placing this 45 degree line over the stitch line. Okay. And so it's right on the stitch line. And then um, I'm going to place it right at the, the point where those uh, where those blocks should intersect or for that these um, two corners will intersect. And then I've just drawn a line using my friction pin here. And so when I you won't be able to see it until I move it, but until I move the ruler. But before I do that, I'm just gonna place a couple pins here. Just to kind of mark the place and hold that fabric. But here's our here's the line. 
And I'm going to go to the sewing machine and actually sew from this point all the way down. So I'll do that and I'll show you what it looks like. It is moment of truth time. I have not opened this yet. I wanted to open it on camera for the first time. I've stitched from the inside stitch point straight out on my um, stitching line that I drew with my friction pin. I'm going to take the pins out and open it up and hopefully we will see a nice mitre corner. And it looks pretty good. I'm excited. So the next step is going to be to trim this excess and then press the seam and I'm going to press the seam open and then push this little tip out. So let me cut this. I'm just placing my ruler at the quarter inch line a quarter inch from the edge of where I want to cut and giving it a nice cut and then I'm going to press these open and trim my dog ears and I'll show you what it looks like. Here is the finished mitre corner. I am so excited about it. It looks really great. One thing that um, I felt like really helped was changing the way that I pressed because here you can really the seams have really nested here. You can see that this side is pressed toward the red and the other side is pressed toward the turquoise. I feel like that really helped it to lay really flat. I have actually only one more side to put on, but I have two more corners left to finish. I will put some pictures at the end of the video so that you can see the whole quilt top with the mitre corners. I'm just really excited about this technique and it is much simpler than I thought it would be. If you have questions about uh, mitering corners or about any quilting question, hopefully I can answer it. Please leave it in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.